we want to look at how fluctuations around an economy's average level of output, its normal capacity level of output, changes from year to year, fluctuates around its trend level. And to do so, we aggregate all goods and services into one giant market, which we call the goods market. Aggregate supply in this market for all goods and services in the short run tends to be a fairly shallow curve because it reflects the fact that in the short run businesses don't adjust their prices on a weekly or monthly basis in response to aggregate demand changes in response to changes in demand for whatever they are producing they tend to expand or contract production first and prices only change over the long run but in the short run when demand falls off even though there is some price adjustment generally firms have to cut back on what they produce and and lay off staff and when there is an increase in demand for what you are producing firms expand your capacity they don't immediately jack up their prices so we draw the supply curve for all goods and services as relatively shallow reflecting the fact that increases in output are accommodated without significant price increases of course this is more so at low levels of output where the economy has a significant amount of cap excess capacity increases in output at at higher levels of output will more likely be accompanied with price increases because productive resources are becoming scarce but in any case the aggregate supply curve is, is fairly shallow in the short run. The cost of production in an economy, which is going to determine uh, essentially how willing are businesses to provide goods and services at any particular price, the cost structure of production can be broken down ultimately into only two components. One is the cost of labor. Whatever is the cost of labor, average wages in, in, in the country, that is a main component of the cost of production. And that's determined in the market for labor. The second component is the cost of imported inputs. And that is going to be determined by you know, external events and the foreign exchange market. We say that the cost of production, the cost structure can be broken down into only these two components because we can, by a process of iteration, we can reduce all costs of production ultimately to these two so in the first instance a business will have labor costs imported costs and domestic inputs but then when you go to the suppliers of those domestic inputs they too will have labor costs imported costs and domestic inputs and then you go one step further to those domestic suppliers and so on and iteratively you can end up eliminating the domestic inputs and ultimately it's imported costs and labor costs. So that is why to determine the height of the aggregate supply curve, what firms are willing to sell what they produce for, it comes down to labor costs and imported costs. So 
to understand fluctuations, at least in the short run, we combine this aggregate supply curve with a downward sloping aggregate demand curve, the demand for all goods and services. And we have a model of an economy's market for all goods and services, which we call the goods market. This aggregate supply curve is going to shift upwards or downwards based on what happens in the labor market and what happens to imported costs, such as the price of oil, if it's an oil dependent economy. And the aggregate demand curve is going to shift left or right, depending on what happens to consumers' disposable income and interest rates and fiscal policy and the exchange rate. So let us use this model of the goods market to do an exercise. What happens in the economy if uh, the economy, the country has a sizable tourist industry and there's an increase in tourist arrivals. It becomes a popular tourist destination or it's already popular and there is a sort of boom in global tourism. So tourists start to show up in increasing numbers. Well, that comes in through the net exports component of aggregate demand because tourism is an export of services. So the aggregate demand curve in our model is going to shift to the right, reflecting not only the demand for tourism services directly, so hotels and, and transportation and attractions, but some of that increase in demand will be passed on to the suppliers of those tourism services. All those businesses are going to try to increase their supply to, to meet the increased demand by tourists. So the economy expands. The economy, if the, if the tourism sector is a large enough share of the economy, then that is going to lead to an overall economic boom. This would be the case in, in any economy with a significant uh, tourism sector like, like Kenya or Mexico or Barbados. So the economy experiences a boom. Output rises. Let us look at the case of a supply shock instead of a demand shock. If there is a rise in the world price of oil, and this is a uh, as most developing countries are, and even many developed countries, these are oil dependent economies, that they are net importers of energy. Then a rise in the world price of oil is going to show up here as an upward shift in the aggregate supply curve because it raises the cost of production in the economy by raising the cost of energy. Because prices, because the price level has to be higher, then of course, we know that consumers are going to be, be, be cutting back on their consumption of domestic production because it's now relatively more, more costly. So the price level in the economy goes up and the economy's GDP falls. The economy goes into a recession. So this is how fluctuations in an economy's GDP from year to year come about. Fluctuations in macroeconomic activity originate in shocks to demand or supply in the aggregated market for all goods and services. <laughs>